Good evening, it's Quant Trade Edge, and today I have a special lesson on GAN bar counting. We've had a lot of requests for this from our community, and it is something that I think is fundamental to trading. I really wish that when I first learned how to trade, if I had learned with this as my foundation, I think so many other things that I learned subsequently would have made more sense and clicked a lot faster uh, for me. I consider this, uh, you know, a fundamental tool in objectively reading the markets. And if you'll pay attention for the next few minutes, I guarantee that it'll change the way you look at markets and things that used to seem random to you will make more sense. So before we get started, if you could please smash that like button and subscribe and push this out to your friends. Our community is growing and it's, uh, it's really a great thing. With gar ba GAN bar counting, there are only two particular labels for a bar. It's either an up bar or a down bar. There are four types of bars, and all four of them can be classified as either an up bar or a down bar. Each bar is qualified based on its relation to the previous bar. So if you think back to the beginning of time, on the first day of trading in any security, there was one bar. And there was no way to judge whether that's an up bar or a down bar because we have no previous history. But every subsequent day now has a label and it's mechanical. And I'll show you what the rules are and I'll even provide some of the code to uh, assess the bars. So every chart basically has the same GAN bar count. So from that perspective, it is programmable and objective. Two people in different parts of the world can be looking at the same chart and come into the same same conclusions. And in this relational view, only the highs and lows matter. The open and the close do not. So the four types of bars are these, where you can have a lower high and a lower low. That's a down bar. You can have a higher high and a higher low to the previous bar, and that's an up bar. You can have a lower high and a higher low, that's an inside bar. And then you can have a higher high and a lower low, and that's, an, that's a traditional outside bar. There are other variations of the outside bar, and I lump in all of the you know, equal to highs and lower low. Uh, I, I lump all of that into here. So I, I count my inside bar as being strictly lower high, strictly higher low. And you can pretty much just say anything else is an outside bar. So if looking at code makes it uh, makes more sense to you, you know, a down bar is defined as the low is lower than the previous bar. That's what this minus one indicates. And high is greater than the previous bar. For an up bar, you have high greater than the previous high, low greater than the previous low. For an inside bar, the high is less than the previous high, the low is greater than the previous low. And then you can pretty much just say everything else is an outside bar. You know, the high is greater than or equal to the previous high, and the low is less than or equal to the previous low. An up bar gives you, so, so these are the four types of bars. Now, narrowing it down to the two types of bars, an up bar is an up bar, a down bar is a down bar, an inside bar takes the same label as the previous bar. So depending on the context you're coming in, if you have you know, an up bar and then you have an inside bar, you give it the benefit of the doubt. We're still in an up bar that you know, no highs, uh, you know, no lows have been violated, no highs have been violated in this case with an inside bar. So the trend is just, uh, you give the, the benefit of the doubt to the existing trend and you call it the same as what the previous bar was. Now with outside bars, you also do the same thing. And there's a couple of schools of thought on this. You know, one is it depends on which side of the previous bar you took out first. If you took out the low first and then you took out the high, some people would call that an up bar. But the problem with that is without getting more granular bar data, you don't know which one happened first for sure. So I just like to ignore them, uh, treat them the same way as I do the inside bars. They uh, basically take the same label as the previous bar. And there's also one exception 
to that rule, and that is if the outside bar swings a tail somewhere and basically makes a new swing high for the entire swing, it's considered an up bar, or if it makes a new swing low for the entire swing, it is considered a down bar. And again, that is something I discount. Uh, in all of my practicing uh, of this method, that opportunity, you know, that situation shows up so infrequently and it's so difficult to program that the risk reward is just not there to get down to that level of um, being, that, being that picky with it. Now, this is my own rule, so I don't want to purport this as, as you know, as, as a GAN thing, but what I do with this is I look at hoagies as an exception. So if, you know, for example, let's say we came down into this bar and this bar was a down bar because it had a lower low and a lower high to the previous bar, well, then this is inside, so it's also down, but then I would not call this an up bar, even though in relationally to the last bar, it has a higher high and a higher low, I would basically just not even think about any of these bars until we break the high or the low of the hoagie. So in this case, if in, in this example, if we if this was a down bar coming from up above, then this is really just the same swing right here. Had this little bar taken out the high, well then I would count that as an up bar. So that's just my own adaptation uh, from all the practicing I do. It seems to work and help with the counts for two-way patterns uh, and U-turns and other things. So that's my own adaptation for that. So this is it, it's really quite simple. You know, generally we're just looking at whether something is an up bar or a down bar. There's four types of bars. And you know, this is a very clear down bar, a very clear up bar, and everything else takes the label of the previous bar. You know, these are little coding mnemonics, depending on what language you're gonna code in, that would help you get there. And my exception is the hoagies. So what I want to do now is go through a few relevant charts, which currently, which should be front and center on everyone's mind, is the S&P 500, given the type of move we had uh, on Thursday and Friday of last week, and show you how using this count helps. So this is a five-minute chart of the primary session. Where did the day start? So the day started right here at 8.30. So relationally to this last bar, I'll blow it up really big so we can get some practice on this. And, and there's no way around the practice. Uh, after a while, you'll start to see it without actually having to draw on the lines and count it out yourself, but nothing beats practice uh, for getting this down. And you know, this is clearly a down bar. This is clearly a down bar. This is clearly a down bar. This is an inside bar, so it's also a down bar. This is an up bar. This is a down bar. This is an up bar. And you know, here where things get really tight, you have to really look at them. And this low was one tick higher than this low, which made this an up bar and made this an up bar. And this was an inside bar, so we still call it an up bar. And this is a down bar where we have a lower high and a lower low. So you get the picture here, and let me just find an outside bar to give you an example of what that looks like. And there we go, here's one. So this was a down bar. This made a slightly higher high, so it's an up bar. This is also an up bar. And then this made a lower low and a higher high. So it basically, you know, is an outside bar, so it took on the same label as the previous bar. So now we've seen the four types of examples, you know, straight up down bars, straight up up bars, inside and outside bars. I want to show you the significance now of having these, these up bar and down bar labels. And the significance is that you can start drawing in swings. So starting in, starting from the beginning of the day, you'll see that we have this ABC pattern up and that would have been your level to short against. When you're in a downtrend and you get an ABC up against the trend, that, that is a shorting opportunity and taking out the high of this level would be a U-turn. So that continued lower. And then if you notice, we only had one-legged retracements all day long. 
there was that one bar retracement one bar retracement this lasted well i guess the high was hit within one bar and in this situation going back to our our knowledge of u-turns since this is the last swing down this swing up is now bigger than the last swing down had we taken the high out of this bar that would have been a u-turn but we didn't we you know now again the way i look at it this entire thing is a hoagie so i'm not going to worry about this up down up within here this down just goes all the way down to here and then we had a one leg up again you know this is several bars now one two three four five but it's still just a one-legged bar up and we start going back down one-legged bar up start going back down this one's inside, but here, this whatever two, three bar pattern is still just one leg. Go down, one leg up, down, and then this here's a hoagie. You've got three bars uh, or two bars inside of this bar on the left. And then one spike up. And now this spike up is greater than the previous swing down. The previous swing down so you know swings are alternating when you go from down to up or up to down i'm sorry i didn't make that clear but hopefully that was abundantly clear in, in uh, what i was doing here this swing up is now greater than the previous swing down so had we pulled back and taken this out this level would have been a u-turn level but again that didn't happen instead we pushed on to new lows we got this down move one leg up, this down move. So we've made it all the way to 1.55 p.m. yesterday, counting the bars and drawing in the swings. This was 8.30. And so if you're reading the structure of this day, gap down, didn't fill the gap, one impulse, ABC up, then bleeding away all day long without another ABC up until the last hour. And in the last hour, starting here at two o'clock, we had an A, B, C up. And that set up a wonderful short with a very tight risk. You know, this bar at 2.35 was seven and a half, eight and a half, nine and a quarter points. And for a day like this, nine and a quarter is pretty tight. And then we basically went down from 43.02 to 51. So we basically went down 50 points. So to be able to get 50 points off of less than 10 points, that's 5R and just pretty much from 230 to 315. And we ended with this one big swing down. Now, the one thing you're going to notice is the higher the time frame you go, the less noise you'll see. This is a five minute, which was reasonable for a day like Friday. And you can see that we had one ABC pattern right here towards the beginning of the day. And we had one ABC pattern towards the end of the day. And everything else in between were just one legged pullbacks, one little consolidate, uh, one legged consolidations. And there were no U-turns. So even the two times where we got a swing up greater than the previous swing down, there was no follow through to make it a U-turn. So that is how I read the structure on what happened Friday. Now, if we take it up a time frame and go to something like a 45 minute chart, really the last two days, and let me just remove everything else that we, uh, a lot of lines on the five minute and you could do the same thing with a one minute if you want to get practice um, but this is actually two days ago and this whole thing has been one leg down on the 45 minute if we pull up something a little more moderate like the 15 minute you know we've had a one-legged pullback that's a hoagie one-legged pullback one-legged pullback, one-legged pullback, no two-legged pullbacks, no ABCs. On the 15, this has all just been one-legged pullbacks. Now, what gets interesting is if we take this to a higher time frame, and the higher and higher you go on a time frame, 
you're going to have a lot less noise. But let's go look at a daily chart. And actually for a daily chart, let me just use the index. And all the way from the high on January 4th, we pretty much had an A, B, C. We had two legs down to here. And you can see how clean they are. And then we had, oops, those are all up. So this was an, this was an outside day, so it's still characterized as up. This was one, two legs up. And this high is 45.90. This high was 45.95. Okay, so actually, I'm sorry. This on the, on um, the 24-hour chart, on the futures chart, this actually made a slightly higher high. On the cash index, this made a lower high. So two legs down, one leg up. Or, you know, or I, I guess you can consider it two legs up. It didn't quite make the high, depending on how you want to look at that. This here, two legs down. This here, two legs up. And you're starting to see the significance of two legs. A lot of things happen in two legs. You know, they can happen in three or four legs, but you're usually going to at least get your two legs. Now here, this low on the cash index was 57. This low was 61. So this was a higher low much like over here where we made a slightly lower high, down here we made a slightly higher low. And if we go back to Oops, sorry about that. Let's go back to candles. Oh, geez, I messed it up. Let's just set this up real quick again. This is where editing would be nice, but uh, that's just a whole lot of time that I don't have right now. So appreciate you bearing with my technological incompetences. Okay. So back to where we were. So here we had that slightly higher low and then we got two legs up into the high. Imagine that. And then two legs down into that breakout that we had at the beginning of the week. And now that we have a two wave structure that has gotten undercut, this is the first U turn from the high on the daily chart. Right from this high, we had two legs down. We had two legs up, we had two legs down, we had two legs up, we had two legs down, we had two legs up, we had two legs down, and this is now the first U-turn. So that is something to take into account, uh, something to just be cognizant of. And we do have this trend line right here that's barely holding, so, you know, don't count it out yet until we take that out, which, you know, could be at any time. And taking it out even further to say a weekly, Let's take all this noise off again on the weekly chart. And you can see that we had two waves down off the high. 
and now we have two legs up off the low and we're down onto this wave here. So I hope this makes sense in on the weekly when you see that, you know, going into the high, we had a two wave pattern. The first push down off that high, we had a two wave pattern and that two wave pattern was slightly greater than the previous two wave pattern up, which is giving us a little bit of information. Then we had a two wave pattern up and this two wave pattern up was a lot weaker than the previous two week pattern, two way pattern down. It did get above the 61.8, but it's definitely smaller than the previous one down. And now we're starting on this leg down. If we go out even further to a monthly and let's clean this up, there's something really interesting on the monthly chart that I think is significant to right now when we're really trying to figure out the next big move in this market. And that is coming off the COVID lows, the entire swing to the top was only one leg. And then we had our first down move in February and March was an up bar. We got back above it and April is currently an inside bar. And as we've seen things move in two way patterns, if this is going to move in a two way pattern, we would expect a higher high before we get a down bar and we're going to get a down bar below 41.5787 in S&P cash. And also if we look at this U-turn structure, oh, I guess it would be on the weekly then the U-turn structure. We have this ABC down. And if we take out the, the, the low low, 41.14.65, taking out this low puts us in a down bar, which means we're not getting our two waves as we would expect. Below this low is an absolute U-turn, 41.14.65. And that would be the first weekly U-turn of this move. And that would be a, uh, and that would forewarn of, of much more downside to come. So taking it back to the daily, you know, this is that, you know, the, the low of this move is where we get the weekly U-turn. And let me just clean this up. To make the message clear. And that is below this point here. 41.14.65 cash on the cash market. Uh, that would be the weekly U-turn. And below 41, I don't remember which one it was. On the monthly, 41.57.87, which is this one right here. Below that, our monthly bars are no longer behaving as we expect which means we would, we would be getting a two wave down. This one wave up was kind of an anomaly and we would get two waves down on the monthly. So both of those, uh, taking out either of those lows, forewarns of more downside. And that's also kind of why this trend line here is kind of our last hope for the bulls. If, you know, if, if that area, you know, if, if roughly around the lows of Friday can hold, that's sort of our last hope for the bulls. And, you know, below that is sort of a no man's land. And as we start taking out this low and this low, the higher time frame structure is clearly changing to the downside. So that's my message on GAN bar counting. Again, the purpose of this is to learn GAN bar counting. And I always find that putting it in the context of something that is relevant in the current moment is one of the best ways to actually get people to pay attention and, and learn it. And hopefully I've, I've done that with the S&P down from the five minute all the way up to the weekly and monthly charts. 
So just like, uh, like always, if you have any questions, please leave comments and I'm happy to answer them. And please do smash that like button, subscribe, push this out to your friends. We're growing our community and it really helps me take the time to make these uh, videos and more content.